How many of you have ever attended any type of mother's group? Show of hands. Okay. How many of you have ever attended a Catholic mother's group? Show of hands. Oh, wow. This is very encouraging. Okay. You know, St. Pope John Paul II said that as the family goes, so goes society. So let's take a look at society out there. I don't know about you, but when I see society out there, I think the world is going crazy. So let's go back and look, what is the building block of society? The family. So what's going on in the family? Let's go in further. Look at the mom, the heart of the family. Moms nowadays are stressed out. They're pulled in a million directions with many demands placed on them so that they get distracted from their primary vocation, which is holy motherhood. As Dorothy said, my name is Kathy Haynes. I've been running Moms Group at St. B's, St. Bernadette, sorry, for the last 10 years. Then thank you, Dorothy, for letting me speak once again about this really important ministry. First, quick background on myself. I'm a cradle Catholic, you know, born into it, just kind of went to church, said all my prayers, didn't really understand all the whys. I married a wonderful man I met at university who used to be a Baptist but who challenged me to the core about what it meant to actually be a Catholic. So he converted eventually through study, and we both ended up teaching RCA at our parish for the next 14 years. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I was a, a corporate computer trainer until I had my first son, and then I went part-time teaching at the local college until our family grew again, this time through adoption. My husband and I adopted a sibling group of four, and they came all at once. <laughs> Has anyone out there seen that movie, Instant Family, with Mark Wahlberg? Yeah, it's remarkably truthful. It's, uh, yeah. Anyway, that was five years ago. And uh, so now I've got five kids, ages 16, 14, uh, 12, 9, and 6. And due to the nature of the new kids' special needs, I've had to quit teaching uh, at all, and I'm just home with them most of the time because uh, there's lots to do. Anyway, backtrack to my husband. So he converted, and I was thrilled to have a partner to finally share my faith with. Finding other Catholic mothers, though, to share my faith with, that's another story. <clears throat> when I had my first son, I found there was no shortage of parenting advice out there. I read a lot of Today's Parent magazine. And there was, you know, lots of somewhat informa useful information on, you know, how to cook meals that'll curb picky eating and how to do fun crafts with your kids and plan fun family outings and even some disciplinary techniques for certain behaviors. Although I got to say nothing quite helped me like Dr. Ray. Uh, <laughs> but there was always a component missing, a very important component. How do I raise a faith-filled child with strong character? I joined many different mom and talk groups at the library and the Ontario Earlier Center, et cetera, et cetera, but there was always something missing. It was all very secular. I remember one day I lamented to my spiritual director about just the general lack of fellowship among Catholic moms in general. How wonderful it would be to have a group for like-minded Catholic mothers that offered prayer, support, and encouragement to each other as we strove to raise our kids in the faith amidst all the world's influences. My spiritual director just stared at me, leaned in, and said, why don't you start one? <laughs> oh no, oh I couldn't do anything like that. I mean, what would I do with such a group? I, 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 I don't, I, I'm not a leader, I can't, I can't do stuff like that. Time went by. Now you have to realize that 10 years ago, there, we did not have the wealth of easily accessible Catholic parenting resources that we have today. So how did it all start? Simple, bulletin ad, poster at the back of the church. I was so excited. Our very first meetup, one mom showed up. It was a start. Since then, however, our group has grown to over 120 women from across Durham region Homeschooling, schooling, working inside the home, outside the home. We've got moms of newborns, moms of teens, adult children, and even some grandparents have shown up. Running a mother's group is not without its struggles, especially in the beginning when attendance was low, and even based on the fact that many of our moms were, from, were in different places on their spiritual journeys. 
But I realized that our differences were part of what made this beautiful ministry because we're all learning from each other. At the heart of it all, we all love our kids and want what's best for them spiritually. I've had moms say to me that they love the moms group because it's the only venue they had to discuss matters of faith. And in many cases, one of the few situations where you're surrounded by a group of women and don't feel judged. Now, over the years, <laughs> it's true. We, we, we can't judge, otherwise we wouldn't be Christian. <laughs> We're not allowed to judge. <laughs> Over the years, my heart went out to all my moms, because at home they were struggling with so much more than faith. They had a lot on their plates. Many of these moms were doing the heavy lifting when it came to child rearing, and particularly imparting the faith to their kids. Although many have supportive husbands, there are many whose husbands are either lapsed, not Catholic, or anti-Catholic. Who's going to pass the faith down to the next generation? You know, I saw a 2014 study that shows that the parent playing the largest role in faith development of a child is a whopping 81% in favor of mothers. We need to minister to moms. So as I said, I've been running a moms group for the last 10 years, and I can't begin to describe all the blessings that have come from it. We start each meeting with prayers and intentions. And one thing that never really occurred to actually a lot of our moms, especially the new ones coming out, is that they can actually pray for their husband's conversions. So we started that. And after six years, we had an evangelical husband convert. After two, uh, two more years after that, we had a Jewish husband convert. We've had so many prayers answered by the grace of God. I've had moms return to confession after 20 years. It's renewed my own spiritual life, and it's truly an honor and a blessing to journey alongside these women. As Catholic mothers, we need encouragement from other Catholic moms because we're not getting it from the world, as Dr. Ray had mentioned. Sometimes you just need to hear from another mom that you're not crazy because you don't let your 11-year-old play Grand Theft Auto. You know that game that's rated M, that uh, you get points not only just for racing the cars, but also stealing them, beating up the cops that chase you, taking drugs, picking up a hooker in a pro uh, strip club, having sex with a prostitute in the back of the car, and then beating her to death, and then, bu then burning your family down. Yeah, I was the only parent in my son's grade five class. Uh, rather, let's put it this way. My son was the only grade five boy not allowed to play that game. I just thought I'd let you know out there, because most people think it's just a racing game. No. Um, our group, our, mother, our mother's group has even branched out to organize different family events in our parish through the year based on the church's liturgical calendar. So, for example, we have an All Saints Day party, we have an Advent party, we've got a Lent gathering, we've got a Marian celebration in May. This is all in hopes of bringing the faith, making the faith a little more alive to our children and helping them feel a little more connected to their faith community. Another happy byproduct of the mother's group is the networking of moms who used to be strangers to each other at the parish. We would all see each other, but not really know each other. This has all changed now with the establishment of a vibrant community of moms and their families who look out for each other and pray for each other. Not only do we offer spiritual support, but also practical in the form of passing down children's clothing, toys, and even organizing meal trains when things are tough, as they were for me when I first adopted my four kids. So I want to thank all my moms for that. I honestly don't know what I would do without these girls. They, I know they've got my back. And it's changed my life having this mother's group. And I really hope it can change all of yours as well by either attending one at your local parish, or if your parish doesn't have one, please consider starting one. As Dorothy mentioned, on every table there's a red postcard. So you can either fill it out yourself if you feel called to be a mom's group leader right now, or if you want to nominate someone else. Another thing I want to challenge you to do is when you get home, go on to the Catholic Mom's Group website and search for the nearest mother's group to you. Once again, if there isn't one, contact Dory, she, Do Dorothy. She'll hook you up. So thank you once again, ladies, and let's continue with this wonderful day. <laughs>